I'm going to mute me. So here we go. I'm going to mute me. So here we go. I'm going to mute me, so here we go. I'm going to mute me, so here we go. Amy, where should I type my responses? We'll have to say them out loud. All right, it's six o'clock and I think we are now live um, here at our uh, DuPont Manual eighth grade virtual open house. So um, here with us tonight, we have Michelle Bynum, um, who is our admissions director at Manual and YPASS. So she is um, an individual that you will be um, turning your applications in and uh, probably in communication with if you've um, asked any questions through this process. We also have Ms. Paula Boggs, who is our freshman um, assistant principal. We have Mr. Greg Kuhn, who is our admissions director. He is another assistant principal at Manual High School. And we have Ms. Casey Crowder, who is our YPASS um, admissions specialist, as well as our um, director of all YPASS events. Um, and then I am Amy Miron. I am the freshman counselor at Manual High School. So we are here tonight to kind of welcome you and um, answer any questions that you may have regarding the manual admissions process. As we get started in the chat, as well as in the description of this YouTube video, there is a link to a Google form. And that is where we'll be um, collecting all questions and answering them here uh, live this evening. Just so that you know, there is a little bit of a delay in um, our talking and what goes live. So if there's a little bit of a void, um, we haven't lost you. We're just uh, reading the questions and answering those. So we are super excited to see all of you guys here this evening. Um, to kick us off, we are going to have a quick message from Dr. Newman. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here with us in person, but he uh, wanted to send us a quick welcome message uh, to everyone here this evening. So let me get that started. Hello, future Crimsons. My name is Dr. Michael Newman, and I am the principal at DuPont Manual. I want to apologize up front for not being available for our live session today, but I had a death in the family and had to leave town. With that aside, let me start by saying how excited I am for your interest in DuPont Manual High School. And though I've only been at Manual since the end of February, I have already learned much about the many great successes and traditions DuPont Manual students have achieved, as well as accomplished for our school, our local community, and beyond. Some of those are that DuPont Manual High School ranks number one in Kentucky. Our students score an average of 25.7 on the ACT with over 100 students scoring a perfect score on one or more of the components of the exam. 450 academic all-star scholar athletes 
are produced with an average of 21 students going on to participate in college athletics each year. 38 students are selected for the Governor's School for the Arts and 36 students are selected for the Governor's Scholars Program. And additionally, last year we had 210 valedictorians along with 37 national merit finalists. So please know the tradition of excellence is very strong here at DuPont Manual. And over our upcoming years, we want to continue this excellence by also focusing on growing academic achievement from a post NCI world. Also enhancing the student learning experience through engagement and improving school culture by focusing on diversity and sense of belonging. This work is called the Crimson Way. It is a unified effort to achieve success in our endeavors. I look forward to application review processes and seeing how you will help make contribution to growing manual success. Please view our live Q&A session linked in the virtual open house room. And we hope this uh, presentation, along with our other linked resources, will help you decide to apply to DuPont Manual. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Newman. And um, we are, you are missed here this evening, but understand um, why you are not able to be here. Really quickly, um, before we get started with the questions and answers, I wanted to be able to just kind of show you quickly um, how to navigate the virtual college or the virtual eighth grade open house. Um, we have multiple of these virtual rooms uh, that are located at our DuPont Manual Counseling website um, to help our students navigate the um, in-person as well as have access to everything virtually. Um, everything in this room um, just about is clickable. So if you would like more information about the HSU program, you can click the image here that says HSU. If you would like more information about the JNC program, you click here that says JNC and so on and so forth. Just a um, fun fact is that at seven o'clock, the MST and the JNC magnets will both have a separate live session that you are able to join if you choose to do so. And you can find those links by clicking on either one of um, those two magnets pages and the link to join the live will be available there. Also in this room, you'll find um, the application as well as an amazing how-to video on how to navigate that application process. We have virtual tours for both YPASS and manual, um, and a lot of other information about manual activities and um, other pieces of information that we have had available either at the showcase of schools or other um, opportunities of getting to know manual. So all of these items here are clickable that are on this bookshelf with additional information. The question and answer sheet will be available for the next couple of days. So as you uh, visit this virtual site, you can ask questions through the question document that is linked up here at the top right corner. Something that's very important in this room is the sign-in form. So as you are here this evening, um, as well as navigating and perusing our virtual platform, please make sure that you complete this uh, Google form in order for us to be able to get in contact with you um, about any additional information or upcoming um, items that may be important for you as you are applying to manual. Now for the main reason of why everyone is here this evening, and that is the question and answer segment of tonight's show. Um, kind of feel like that um, we are all becoming movie stars at this point um, <laughs> through this process of uh, the virtual platform. Um, I will again place the um, question and answer link in the chat of the YouTube. Um, it is at the very top of the chat as well as in the description. Uh, that way we can uh, keep track of the questions a little bit easier. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with the uh, YouTube chat but we'll try very hard to um, catch anything. If your question doesn't get answered here this evening, please make sure you complete that question form and we will get back with you as soon as possible, either via email or uh, reaching out to let you know when an opportunity is to give us a call if your questions are a little bit more complicated than an email may be able to um, handle. All right, so I'm gonna turn the show over to our moderator this evening, which is Ms. Bynum. 
who is our admissions uh, liaison. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to see you. Glad you're here tonight. Uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, several questions. She mentioned um, my how to apply video. It is very specific, literally step by step by step. So I definitely would encourage you. I take you to the exact screen. I show you point to the exact spot exactly what to do. So several of the questions already in the chat can be answered by doing that. So please, I encourage you when you have time to watch that video. Um, also, several of the questions can be found at dupontmanual.com. That's our website, dupontmanual.com. Go under admissions, apply, and several uh, are found there. Um, the very first question I think we need to address because it's um, several in several spots in various forms, but uh, can, uh, can I have you guys speak to the question of can I apply in general kind of to YPASS and HSU and or more than one uh, magnet at a time and, and what exactly that means. Go for it. Great. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Seems an opportune time to introduce myself to you. Uh, it is so exciting to be in front of applicants. Uh, the energy is always palpable and I'm very grateful for the excitement that you bring. Um, I, I wanna say as a shout out to all five of us here on the call with you tonight, uh, this is Red White Week in manual, which means that it is a week of having fun for our students and our staff. Every day we do fun things. Now, this is all centered around a certain football game that we play this Friday that we played every year uh, against another high school here in the city of Louisville, a very fine high school. Uh, I will refrain from naming it tonight. You know who I'm talking about. But we all missed the Powder Puff football game tonight, uh, which is a lot of fun. Our, I, our, our student body is very excited. That's when the juniors and the seniors play each other in football. However, the teams are comprised solely of girls from those two classes. Uh, it's very exciting. We didn't get to play it last year. So that's how much we love applicants is that we are here with you uh, instead of out watching the Powder Puff football game. And we're happy to be doing that. Now, I know the original question is kind of a softball question in the sense that JCPS, the application process for JCPS is that all applicants have one first choice. And when you make your one first choice selection, you will not be selecting just a school, but a magnet program, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you something really strange. It's gonna sound like I'm being silly. You don't apply to manual high school. You're actually, you're applying to one of the magnet programs at manual high school. And even when you're applying to the Youth Performing Arts School, uh, you are applying to manual high school because all of our manual, all of our youth performing arts school magnet students in all nine of the performing art majors are automatically students at manual. They automatically take all the courses that every other magnet student at manual takes. In fact, what you'll find is that in your freshman year, your English class will be with students from all different magnets, your math class, your science class, your magnet class will be just with students in your magnet, but you go to school with all the other students in all the other magnets. Now, that's a long winded way of saying that you cannot apply to more than one magnet at a time. Now, JCPS does offer you a second choice. This is, I wanna say this and speak very plainly, very clearly about this. Manual, among our five magnets, historically, every year since I've been there, and you can see from my hair color, I've, probably, I've been there a while, and you're correct, I have. Uh, we have always filled all of the seats that JCPS 
will allow us with kids who listed us as a first choice. In fact, the unfortunate truth is that there will be many students who would have done very well in the magnets at manual that we didn't have room to take. And we don't say that lightly. What I'm saying to you is if you list a manual magnet as a second choice, we will never see it because all of our seats are full. So I, I am saying to everyone listening, you want to make a, obviously a very careful selection when you select your one magnet. Now there are programs specifically at the Youth Performing Arts School that once accepted into another magnet, if you're accepted into HSU, uh, JNC, MST, or VA, you can come audition for the concert band, for the orchestra, for piano, for choir, and for guitar. Is that, is that everything, Ms. Crowder? Yeah, I think you covered it. I, I also would like to add, so um, Mr. Kuhn is absolutely correct. When you are applying to manual, you're applying to one of our five magnets. So you really have to decide what you wanna study for the next four years. And y -Pass is a little unique. If you decide that the Youth Performing Arts School is the magnet that you would like to apply to, um, you can actually apply to up to three of our disciplines. So that's kind of where it varies there um, as far as the Youth Performing Arts School. But you do choose that as your magnet program that you are applying to. So yes, you're absolutely right, Mr. Kuhn. Okay, the other thing uh, I was going to throw in there was um, that when you mentioned about the auditioning, one of the questions also in the chat is uh, about what would the audition look like, and, and it, it's different for each of the disciplines, but at scheduling, we give you the information all about the auditioning uh, process for a non-major, someone in another magnet applying, you know. Yeah, and just to be clear what um, Ms. Bynum is talking about and what Mr. Kuhn touched on is that those auditions would happen if you are not a Y-Pass uh, magnet major. So not to be confused with our initial uh, Y-Pass auditions, which right. you can find all of those requirements at either ypass.org or under any of our admissions uh, websites. Yeah. So as an example, to make sure that we're being clear, if I am a, an eighth grader at a middle school and I apply to the math science technology magnet and I'm accepted in the math science technology magnet. And I also love to sing in the choir or I play the saxophone or I play the viola or the piano um, or the guitar. If I want to, as a recently accepted MST magnet student, I can now contact YPASS and say, hey, I'd like to come audition for one of those programs because that's something that I really like to do. And I think I might be good enough to play with the YPASS group. Yes, and, and we give them that information at scheduling so they don't even have to contact. We give them all the information of what to do. And it usually occurs about the end of April. That, that is as close as it comes. Sometimes people use a term called double major and the reason why that phrase comes into play is because if in my situation, if you're a student in, in the situation I just described and your audition is successful, that uh, Mr. Cook wants you to be in the choir, let's say. Um, well, you're gonna take the same classes in most cases as the choir majors, but you are still an MST magnet student who is taking those classes. Yes, correct. Um, I think I'll address the uh, recommendations uh, now because I have a couple questions about those um, on the number of recommendations. Um, one, it varies with the magnets. So HSU does have three, two teacher and one community. Uh, MST wants a math teacher and a science teacher, but they do have a third 
um, spot in there for a flex person because uh, some of the MST applicants, maybe they go to Kumon, maybe they are in robotics or STEM and they want to use that person uh, also. Um, so MST does have a spot for a third one. Um, all the rest of the magnets just have two recommendations and that's all the spots we want. That's all we need on the recommendations. All you need to do this year is one, ask the teachers and the, or the people that you're going to use for your recommendation, if they would be willing. And then at the time that you're going to input your items into your application, you will give us their name. You'll give us their email address. And once you submit your item, so when you have everything completed in your application, you're going to hit submit. And the second you hit submit, your recommender is going to get an a recommendation sent to their e inbox in their email. So then they will do it online and it will come back to us. And you will be able to go back in and check and see if, if and when those recommendations do come in. So that's it on the recommendations. Um, I, I want to go to a question that, again, is several people are asking in, in a couple of different ways, but um, they want to know how many ninth grade spots, well, specifically for J and C versus how many applicants you get, and then um, what kind of do we look for for admissions, which I know is different for every magnet, but I'm going to let you guys uh, take it away there if you want to. I know that's always asked and always a big question on everyone's mind. I'd, I'd like to, to make sure that uh, <clears throat> the, the numbers are said clearly, as we always do. Uh, JCPS does allot us a, a number of seats every year, and that number is different every year, not wildly fluctuating. Uh, however, the journalism and communication magnet accepts 50 incoming students. The visual art magnet accepts 50 incoming students. The youth performing arts magnet selects 112 incoming students. Then the high school university magnet and the math science technology magnet uh, almost split the rest, not, not always precisely down the middle, but it usually falls in the range. The high school university magnet takes around 150 kids, and then the math science technology magnet takes around 140 kids. And those are not hard and fast because the number some, you know, will fluctuate from JCPS. Uh, in terms of what the magnets are looking for, well, each one of the magnets has a focus. Obviously, we have a performing arts magnet with nine different areas of performing arts. We have a visual art magnet. We have a journalism and communication magnet a math science technology magnet, and then a high school university magnet that is more of a generalized preparation for college and career. Um, each one of those magnets has something unique that they are looking for in terms of aptitude and interest in the student. And that's directly related to the subject matter of the magnet. However, each one of those students I mean, each one of those magnets, each one is looking for something in common among the students that they're going to accept and admit. That is, they want students who want to be in that magnet. They want students who are interested in that magnet, who are passionate about that magnet, who want to grow, make their mark, explore, and really explore and become all that they can be in that magnet. They're looking for students that are growth minded, that, that are more than inhabitors of a seat. They're looking for young people who are gonna come in and make this school part of who they are and leave this place a better place than the way they found it by being involved to the best of their ability during their time here 70 percent of the kids that are in our magnet programs are involved in extracurricular activities directly at the school it is a place of vibrant action and invested people they work hard and they play hard but we really like to think and we believe 
that a lot of that work, when it's being done in a magnet that really sparks your interest, that you're really glad to be a part of, that work is very satisfying work. And I, I know that my colleagues can speak to some of that. Great, thanks, Mr. Coom. Um, I have a couple other things that uh, I need to address. So um, somebody asked about when I was talking about the recommendations, what if they missed the deadline? I mean, uh, technically there is no deadline. However, your application is not complete and cannot be evaluated until we receive them. Um, so I would not recommend bugging the teachers. I would give them a chance before you uh, hit the resend, but um, um, you know, in speaking to a couple of the early review schools, I kind of told them kind of a drop dead deadline and what it'd be your responsibility to check. And if you're not getting a response from that recommender, um, I would perhaps suggest you move on and um, look into asking someone else so that your application can get completed and get reviewed and evaluated. So um, someone else asked about letters, acceptance and rejected. Do you get a letter either way? Yes, you get letters. Um, and emails both either way, either way, and everything goes out all at the same time, you will get um, an email first, but again, all the emails leave the, the, you know, hit the button at about the same time. I mean, it takes several hours to process all of that. So like, just because somebody got theirs, you know, at two o'clock and you didn't get one till three or four, it's just the, our, you know, system servers processing so many that once I hit that button, um, but everyone gets a letter and an email um, either way. So uh, that can address that. Uh, on the forms, uh, there was somebody uh, asking about forms. There are no forms this year. We don't have a physical form of in any way, shape or form. Um, everything is an online. So uh, if you watch my video and starting November 1st, when you can get onto our new admissions website, you will see that you are going to input all of your information directly into that site. So uh, that means if you've already written your essays, that's great. You can copy and paste them into the spots that there's going to be uh, the or if you haven't you know typed them you've just handwritten out or you got notes just type them in directly into the system everything will be inputted into our online system so there are no forms to look for nothing to find um, you can see what you need to be doing you can get your essays already done you can have all your activities listed out copy and paste them into um, the website so uh, that's something I wanted to uh, address there um, uh, Mr. Kuhn and or Casey, they were looking, uh, they want to know what kind of things are we looking for um, in like the essays, particularly. Um, and then another uh, one is about red and white days. They've heard red and white days and like what kind of what would a normal day for a freshman look like um, at our school? I'll start. Um, so as far as the essays go, I mean, um, just like Mr. Kuhn was talking about, every single magnet is totally different. I would say in general, though, we really want to see an essay that, first of all, um, is well thought out, something that a student has really put some effort and some thought into. And all of the essay prompts are there on the website, like Michelle said. Um, depending on the magnet. But I do think that each um, magnet is looking for something that a student has spent some time on and really thought about. And also, of course, we're looking for, you know, someone who is going to excel probably in our English department and make sure that you spell check uh, that, that essay and make sure that it is, um, the best writing sample that you really can provide. Now, as far as the way that our scheduling goes, so we do have block scheduling, which is really unique, but it's great because you get to spend an hour and a half with each of your classes. So on a red day, you will have four classes and on a white day, you will have another four classes to total eight classes. And that can vary depending on when you get a little bit older in your junior and senior year, um, you will be able to choose some off-campus classes because we partner a lot with UofL. So you will have that option to work that into your schedule. But so every single week, say that we start Monday with a red day, then the next day on Tuesday will be a white day. 
then a red day, white day, red day. And then we'll switch the following week to a white week is what you can call it. But it is very unique because you get to spend a lot of time, a lot of instructional time with your teachers. And for the performing arts, it's great because we get a lot more time to thoroughly get into the material with our students. So a typical day at manual could consist of some of your general education classes, maybe an English class, a math class, a social studies class. And then usually you will see one of your magnet teachers every day. Um, so that is typically how your day and how your schedule will pan out. Great, thanks, Casey. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit about the, um, they wanna know if MST classes are available to other magnets. I mean, uh, Amy, you might even potentially wanna address this. Um, and then also then the difference kind of between the HSU and MST, uh, I think um, people always have that kind of question. And and actually then if, if whoever, depending on answering, uh, eventually, some people want to know about our UVL program that we have available. Sure. So, um, multiple of the magnet classes are available to non-majors. Um, those are indicated in our scheduling guide. But preference is always to magnet majors first. Um, so, I'm not going to say that if you are in a um, a different magnet and want to participate in an MST math or science course that you will not be able to participate, but MST magnet students get first preference. So from year to year, it all depends on um, the seats available in each of the classes. So that is uh, definitely kind of a loaded question, which I feel like that's the theme of the evening um, with, um, there's a, a partial answer um, to that question, but there's never a firm um, other than you can only apply to one magnet um, and you can't apply to them all. Uh, that's kind of the only firm answer that we can give you this evening. Um, the other uh, pieces to that question are the major differences between MST and HSU. Those major differences are the, um, the level of the courses. So MST students are taking our highest uh, math, science, and technology courses uh, because they are our math, science, and technology uh, driven students. The HSU program has a little bit more flexibility. We offer top level courses in all math, science, and technology that is available for them to take as an HSU student, um, but it may not be the MST um, distinction of those courses. So that's just something to keep in mind. An HSU student does have flexibility to take some um, other of uh, other classes that we do offer at manual um, with our career pathways or other programs uh, that we do offer um, at manual. The U of L program was another question that kind of linked in here. Um, we offer uh, starting your junior and senior year um, the opportunity to be a part of our Crimson Scholar or our Louisville Academy programs. Both of those programs um, enable students from manual to walk over to U of L, uh, the University of Louisville, and participate in coursework that they offer there. So they are truly college level courses that you could potentially be taking um, as a junior and senior. You'll learn more about those programs um, kind of towards the middle to end of your sophomore year as we are getting ready to um, go through the scheduling process leading up into that junior and senior year. So uh, all of that information is also available on our uh, website under the scheduling. If you're just curious and want to know more about those programs, it is there. Uh, that information does apply to this year's current students, but it does give you a little bit more information if you would like to um, read up on those programs as well. Great, thanks, Amy. Um, Casey, could you talk a little bit about, well, I can answer one question that's very quick. Uh, they were asking about um, the early review application for JCPS is not um, 
or for earlier view is not any different than regular view. It just needs, you need to do the um, JCPS application by the 8th as you do need to turn the materials in. So, and uh, yes, everyone for earlier view uh, does get an audition time. Um, and so Casey, the question is, when is auditions? And then for uh, Mr. Kuhn and Casey slash, they wanna know if there's a limit to the earlier view numbers. So as far as the Youth Performing Arts School goes, um, this is a super busy time for us. We are in the midst of our musical, which involves so many different departments. Um, so our early review auditions will be scheduled on November 29th and 30th, uh, depending on how, it will just depend, right, on how many early review applicants we get. And so to bleed into the next question, there's no limit on how many early review applicants that we will see or that we will audition uh, for the Youth Performing Arts School. We will take as many as, um, you know, if you get that application in on time before November the 8th, and we are able to review it and schedule your audition, then we will see you. So we're not able to schedule your audition without your completed materials. So it's really important that you have everything ready to go on November 1st when the application opens so that you can turn it in, make sure that your recommenders are ready to go and um, that everything is submitted by November the 8th. And then we will schedule you for November 29th or 30th um, as the schedule allows. And then for general review, so if you are not applying for early review, your audition will take place sometime in January or early February. And, and let me also jump in and say in a general sense, for those unfamiliar with early review, the Jefferson County Public Schools uh, has have uh, allowed some of the JCPS middle schools to have an early review of applicants to a certain magnet. With and it does and there is an early review in all of the magnets. It it only happens in the math, science, technology, the visual art, and the youth performing arts. If you are in the visual art program or performing art program at the Western Middle School for the Arts or no middle school, then you may apply for early review to YPASS and or the visual art magnet. Uh, likewise, if you are in the MST program at Farnsley Middle School, Newburgh Middle School or Mazik Middle School, you can apply for early review to the MST magnet. I wanna stress uh, two things. One is the magnets do not fill up with early review applicants. There, are, there is always plenty of room after early review for the general review, if you will, applicants, the non-early review applicants. The second thing is being an early review applicant does not give you an advantage to being admitted to the magnet. You, if you are admitted during early review, you would have been admitted during regular review. That is not the advantage. There is an advantage. And that advantage is that early review simply means you find out before JCPS open enrollment ends, you find out yes or no. And if it's no, you still have time to make another application. So if it's no, you would go back in and, and do the process all over again with a different magnet or maybe a different school uh, if you decide it. But uh, I wanna assure everyone who's not in an early review program, you your opportunities to attend are just as viable as anybody in one of the early review programs. Yes, oh, oops. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, so you kind of address that. That's what uh, some of the folks that are eligible for early review were asking: Are their chances better or not? You know, it, you know, for doing early review. So um, I think it's all about the preparedness. Is, is uh, you know, how prepared are you, especially in the YPASS slash VA world? You know, for your for your audition or for your artwork. So. Um, 
So I got a qu couple of questions on my end uh, to address. Uh, one is several people were asking, you know, can they see somewhere all the elective classes that we offer? Um, we don't have a solid every single one just comprehensive list um you can go to our scheduling guidebook um that miss miron has mentioned uh at our dupont manual counseling.com there at the website um find our scheduling guidebook and all the courses that we offer are listed there there's an asterisk by every single one that is open to any student in any magnet um, but uh, we do have a sample list. It, it's just not totally all comprehensive, but it is a lot. Um, if you look under the DuPontManual.com admissions apply, if you click on the HSU high school university magnet, one of the questions is it asks about the elective courses and it's number three. If you go to number three, um, I have pasted in there a link to a page that lists a lot of the, you know, uh, electives that we offer. But again, it's not totally comprehensive. It's not every single one, but it is a lot of them. Um, I also have a question about grades. If you're a non-JCPS student, if you're a JCPS student, um, I will be pulling your transcripts and uh, we will put them with your application materials. If you're non-JCPS, you will need to submit those uh, grades to us. You will request your transcript from your school. Um, make sure you let them know what items to make sure they're all included in there. Um, that also applies even if you're at a JCPS school, if you have not been there for all of your middle school years, or if you're applying as an older student, if you have, if it's just uh, in this current year or, you know, the previous two, if you have not been at JCPS, sixth, seventh, eighth, all of your previous years, you need to submit anything that's non-JCPS uh, grades. Um, on the application, uh, the way we you will be doing them is you will upload them to your Google account and then you will need to share the link with us in your application and we will have a video showing you exactly how to upload those grades and how to share the link properly because we do need you to make sure you give um, the correct permission. So um, there will be a link. All you got to do is watch it and do exactly what it says uh, as far as uploading loading your grades. So. Um, this is some question and y'all can decide whoever out there wants to answer us. We're getting uh, a lot of um, people are asking, what's the best magnet if I want to go into this field? What's the best magnet for this field? What's the best magnet? You know, for the, I, I, I think there's at least uh, about six different questions relating to, to, to different fields and stuff. Uh, I mean, my quick answer is, or, you know, what I actually talk about this um, a lot is all of our magnets every bit of magnet high school is college preparatory so that is first and foremost if your desire is to go to college after high school you can go to any college in any mag i mean in any major and do anything from any of our magnets um so i don't you know let that stop you mostly it's about deciding what magnet, how you want to spend your time, like Mr. Kuhn said, where your strengths are, where your interests are, how do you want to spend the four years of high school, and then you can go into, you know, any field, um, but if anybody else has any other comments, I actually have two boys that um, were in journalism and communications, and neither one does anything related to that, but they loved every minute of those, of their years here. Uh, they learned practical everyday things that they use every day in their life, they said, um, but one's an engineer, one's a physical therapist, which is not related to JNC at all. Um, so that's just one example, but you guys, if anybody else has anything, jump in and let me know what your thoughts are on all that. Yeah to say that no matter what magnet that you do pick, it is very important that you are passionate about that magnet. So do your research, check out the uh, magnet pages that we have available on this virtual site that we've created, just to make sure you are passionate because once you are a manual student in whichever magnet that you are accepted into, that is your four year course of study. Um, and you can definitely see what each of the courses of study look like um, in our scheduling information. It is mapped out um, for our current students and each year um, our students have, will get that four year map to show which courses they need to take for their freshman, sophomore, junior and senior year. So um, I would just say to make sure that you are passionate and uh, like Ms. Bynum said, just because you get into a magnet doesn't mean that you must um, go into that career. Uh, you will learn a lot of valuable lessons no matter what magnet you select. Um, 
you know, it's not all about um, walking out and being a part of the workforce in that magnets field. Um, it's about all the amazing things that you're going to learn along the way being a manual high school student. So um, we just want to make sure that you are committed and passionate about your magnet because that is, those are, that's your home for the next four years. Anybody else want to jump in on that? If not, we can uh, move on. Uh, I got a question about, uh, well, one, I wanted to address someone who um, maybe didn't hear, but um, an early review, they asked if they could apply to early review for HSU. Um, HSU does not have an early review. There is no magnet in a, a middle school for HSU. And so, um, which is the idea behind early review is to those to continue in their magnet uh, pursuit. So there is no early review for HSU. There is no early review for journalism and communication. I wanna make that very clear. So um, Mr. Kuhn, do you wanna tell us about, they wanna know just in general, most of the other magnets are very self-explanatory, but um, what is HSU? Just out there, they wanna know what it is it. And um, then uh, I got, uh, and, and I know you touched on it a little bit, but maybe you might wanna reiterate, the, they wanna know how many total HSU applications we get a year versus other magnets, um, so. HSU is the, the teachers who review HSU magnet applications are primarily looking for students who exhibit leadership and that demonstrate a commitment to the three pillars of manual, diversity, excellence, and tradition. And in fact, all HSU applicants will have an opportunity to address those questions uh, in writing as part of your application. And in fact, HSU applicants should consider that your audition. Part of the magic of HSU is that with a broad focus like that, when the other four magnets are not, the students in the other four magnets are not, you know, one trick ponies, okay? But their focus of the magnet is pretty specific. So when people are applying, when students are applying to the other four magnets, it's a pretty specific set of interests and aptitudes and skill sets and success that you're demonstrating. With the high school university, you're asked to demonstrate your commitment to leadership, your commitment to excellence, your commitment to diversity, your commitment to tradition. You're asked to describe how you have shown that commitment in the past and how you plan to do that at manual. And as you can imagine, uh, it, th that's a much more broad focus, meaning there are many more students who are able to do a great job articulating that and demonstrating that, that those are the kind of young people they are. Now, you can look up the statistics for manual for all the magnets and their admission numbers. Those aren't a secret. Uh, the, the high school university magnet has the lowest acceptance rate. Well, obviously, that tells you that a lot more people apply than are accepted, even though typically more kids are accepted in the high school university magnet than any of the other magnet programs. There still are that many more students applying to that magnet. And you know what? Those students that are applying, they are doing the right thing. There are so many great young leaders in the high school university magnet that could be accepted that even though the acceptance rate can run from 25 to 30%, I assure you there are many, many more students in that applicant pool that could have and would have been very successful at manual. And it saddens us to not accept them, but we do have limits in terms of the numbers and the seats we can offer. Now, the other four magnets, the acceptance rates are much higher. Sometimes you'll even see an acceptance rate approaching 50% in some of the other magnets, some of the programs at Y-Pass, Jane C, Visual Art, even MST. However, I wanna caution you to consider that the narrower focus of those magnets encourages people that are qualified in those narrower areas of focus to apply, meaning typically 
I'm not going to apply for visual art if I and if I can't draw and paint. I think you get that idea. Whereas I can rightfully consider myself to be a qualified applicant to the high school university magnet. And, you know, I can be correct about that. However, with so many other students applying who are also qualified applicants, the competition does get a little, well, I don't want to put it in negative terms. It's very exciting. But I will say this, any student who applies to any of the five magnet programs is a winner, uh, even if your application is not successful. Now, I know that you're probably not going to feel like that if you're in that position, but the courage and the self-confidence that it takes to make an application to one of these magnets is something that not every young person has. And I wanna congratulate all of you who are going to do it. And I wish that we could offer a seat to every student, but I want you to know that we honor your commitment, your courage, and also your interest in our programs. Thank, great, thanks, Mr. Kim. Uh, I have a couple uh, of things to uh, ad address, a couple of the questions. So um, someone asked uh, about what priority we give to traditional students, uh, to students from traditional middle schools and things like that. Um, we don't give um, priority to any middle schools uh, or you know schools at all. So, um, so it doesn't matter to us where you go to school, where you've been, they're looking at and evaluating the application, the, the materials you submit to us as a whole. Again, most of the time, the reviewers don't even know where you went to school. So, um, so that does not come into play at all. Um, somebody asked about if we have eSports. Why, yes, we do. We just got it about a year and a half ago. Um, and as a matter of fact, speaking of clubs, we are at 90 clubs. We hit 90 clubs uh, a few weeks ago. So we have 90 different clubs and organizations. That is not including sports, folks. That is just clubs and organizations. So there is literally something for everybody at our school. Um, so, uh, you know, I do want to encourage freshmen, especially we encourage everyone, um, to get involved in something when you join, especially right away. Um, if you play a fall sport, great, but if you don't get involved in something at our school with 90 things, there's surely something you'll find your group, you'll find your niche. You're going to find that those people that like the same things you do like that you are interested in the same things, um, It'll help, you know, your transition. It'll, you know, really help ease you in and uh, make you feel comfortable. Um, you know, give you um, some people who have kind of the same things, uh, interests as you do. So, um, so speak, so that's it on the sports. Uh, on the older students, I have a couple of people ask about um, if you wanted to apply. You're already a ninth grader or tenth grader. Um, we do accept applications from uh, older students, and uh, the process is exactly the same. Other than on your uh, grades, all we need is your current year and your previous two years. We don't need all the way back to like sixth grade. So. Um, so uh, here's a question. Speaking of the sports and the clubs and activities, they want to know what is it like to play sports or clubs? I mean, I hear it's very hard, academically rigorous. Then I got, you know, um, certain the magnets, some of them have after school stuff. Can I play a sport? Do I have time? You know, does activities and, you know, can I do all that? I'll speak to that. So um, obviously, at the Youth Performing Arts School, we have kids staying after school for rehearsal, I, I mean, every day. Um, and the same goes for students that choose to play sports. It's the same for students who want to be involved in clubs. Um, and I think that what is so unique about DuPont Manual is that we really encourage our kids to learn how to prioritize um, and how to learn how to balance their lives. And so um, our teachers want to encourage you to, um, you know, broaden your horizons and be able to play sports and be able to be involved in all of those activities. But our coaches are also very committed to knowing that you are committed to academic excellence and that is expected. So we do have a certain expectation um, and grade point average um, that is required of our athletes. 
and to be able to participate, even for say our musical, we make sure that all of our students who are participating in our musical are focused on their grades. And so there are so many different resources out there to help you. Um, we have lots of tutoring opportunities. We have ESS, we have um, all kinds of resources that our students can reach out to. So if you are involved in a club or you are involved in sports, it's definitely doable. Um, I know that everyone says, oh, manual is so hard academically. And while that might be true, I think that we also surround ourselves with um, our friends who are happy to help with their academics, but are also you know, a team member on your sports team. And so there's so many different resources and outlets if you are struggling that you can get help. And then also, you know, like I said, your teachers are gonna encourage you to broaden your horizons, but then your coaches are also gonna work together to make sure that you are happy academically. Great. Thanks, Casey. Uh, I know we're getting close to the end of our time, but I think we could maybe get this one in. Um, uh, Mr. Coon, would you like to speak to us about uh, how do all the magnets work together? They're like, you know, when you got five separate things or whatever, you know, how do do or do they, you know, does it feel like everyone's in a separate school? Do they all work together? Do they support each other? You know, what's the school spirit like? You know, those kinds of things. I, one of the one of the really cool things about DuPont Manual High School is the way it's constructed. Uh, JCPS had an audit by the Magnet Schools of America some years ago, and the executive director of that organization, Scott Thomas, did Manual's on-site visit. And when he finished, he said, I can't believe what you all are doing here. I can't even give you a sister school anywhere in the United States to partner you with because nobody would build a magnet like this today. A modern magnet, meaning a magnet built in the last 20, 25 years, is focused on one subject. Obviously, we have an amalgamation of five subjects and they're not even necessarily correlated. Uh, although, of course, there are connections throughout all of them. Uh, they weren't brought together because they fit together like a puzzle. Uh, what I've found through the years is that the students at Manual really respect each other. And a great, healthy uh, appreciation of other people's talents, passions, interests, ways that they're successful, ways that they invest themselves and involve themselves in life so that at lunch, we can have the quarterback of the football team sitting next to a ballet dancer, sitting next to a, a great oil painter, sitting next to somebody who uh, had a science fair uh, project go to ISEF. And they're all, they may not know everything about each other, but even if they don't, they know one thing, each one of them is special. They have a special passion, a special commitment. And you know what, manual, the magnets in manual don't make a school full of the smartest kids in Jefferson County, not at all. I mean, yes, the kids at manual are smart, but there are plenty of smart kids in manual. I mean, in Louisville. Um, what you'll find in manual, however, is a student body of kids that really, really work hard. And uh, it's that commitment and having that special interest. You, know, you can call it talent if you want, but really talent is just perspiration and preparation. You know, it's never quitting. It's not giving up. It's working hard, you know, and what I would say is if you want to decide, hey, am I a student that can be a dynamic part of this magnet? Can I be a great addition to the magnet? Your application process is your opportunity to show the teachers in that magnet that you're right. And what you're really saying is you're saying that I'm the kind of student that doesn't quit until I find a way to be successful. It doesn't mean I do it by myself. My goodness, no, it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, 
because kids from all magnets cooperate and work together and work with each other. And sometimes there's even opportunities to do direct collaboration. I mean, we've had visual art magnet in the guitar magnet do a concert combined together live on stage. So there's direct collaboration like that throughout the school as well. But it's a very, very fun place to be on a daily basis. I'll also say as I'm a graduate of manual and I had friends in all kind on all different magnets. I mean, just like Mr. Kuhn said, you eat lunch with all kinds of classes and you have all kinds of magnets in your English classes. And then you do get the opportunity to branch out in some of your elective classes. And then of course, all at a football game, you have friends that you hang out with at our pep rallies. Um, you're intermingled with all kinds of different students. So you definitely um, have a family within your magnet just because you happen to spend almost every day with them, but then you also branch out and you have friends all across our school. Yes, thank you so much. Um, there were a couple of questions that popped up. Um, as we were kind of coming to a conclusion here. If you do not feel like that your questions were answered here this evening, um, I think we had a chat rate of about um, 15 questions. I'm assuming that was per second there for a little bit. So I'm sure we missed a few um, things as, as we were trying hard. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to Mr. Miller. Um, thank you so much. He is one of our JNC teachers. He actually uh, was watching from the YouTube world and kind of helping answer some questions in the chat as we were um, here live this evening. So thank you, Mr. Miller for joining us us and helping us out um, behind the scenes and we didn't mm -hmm. even know uh, you were going to show up so we really do appreciate that but um any questions that were answered in the chat, if they were not answered by myself or Mr. Miller, um, I would definitely, and you still don't feel like you have an answer, please make sure you ask that through our question and answer document. Um, I did notice some other people chiming in and answering some questions, so I want to make sure you have the most accurate information. So the only two manual staff members that were participating in that chat this evening were Mr. Miller and myself. Um, so just make sure that you got um, direct information from one of us um, or use the question and answer document and we will uh, respond to that. Uh, we'll probably send out a um, frequently asked questions and answer um, like just document with the question and the answers um, um, as we kind of uh, processed here this evening. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few questions about the application and some different things that we'll want to make sure we get to you. Um, at this time, it is getting really close to seven o'clock. Um, so uh, if you want to hop off this live um, and remember, uh, JNC and MST have a separate uh, Q&A session that is getting ready to start. Both of those links can be found um, on the virtual eighth grade page, which I put um, in the uh, description section of this YouTube video, as well as on our website. Um, and you click on JNC, it will direct you to their YouTube live um, or MST, uh, their YouTube live link is on their page. So um, if you would like to ask specific questions to either one of those magnets, please hop on um, to one of their live sessions this evening. Like I said, we'll keep the question and answer document up live for a little bit longer. Um, thank you guys so on much. The form. For yeah, it's best to use that form uh, and, and not in the chat because we will keep that up till at least a day or so um, and and continue to answer those. It, I mean, we can go around before we leave. If anybody has any kind of final thing, um, I was just going to say that, you know, there is bus transportation no matter which. Um, if you get in, we provide bus transportation to anywhere in the city because we do take kids from all over the city. So transportation would not be a problem. Um, and, you know, as far as, as it goes, the, there's no matter which program, which magnet you decide to apply to, each one is going to offer a demanding curriculum that I think that you're going to find challenging and rewarding um, no matter what. So we do hope you apply to be a part of the diversity, tradition and excellence that is Manual High School. Yes, thank you guys so much this evening. Um, again, if you would like to access our open house page, it's in the description of this YouTube uh, video. 
as well as on the counselor's website and our main website. Um, it is the open house um, image that is there. You can click on that to get to our virtual page with all of the resources and information that we talked about here this evening, as well as the question document that you can um, um, form that you can complete if you have additional questions. And as always, uh, you can reach out to the admissions team here at Manual High School um, through Ms. Bynum uh, to get any additional information and resources uh, that we have available to help you through the application process. So thank you guys. Um, have a wonderful evening. We can't wait to read your applications. Bye.